Hi again. We covered a lot of ground in the previous video. We started from scratch with a fresh WordPress page using blank canvas Elementor template and we built the first section of the landing page using Elementor. If you haven't seen that video yet, the first video, check it out first. There's a link to it somewhere on this page. And this is the fantastic landing page we're building designed by John Frascos from Analog WP. Well, let's press on with section two, much simpler this time. We've got a simple two column layout. There's a pop-up video player in column one and some text and images in column two. So over to our Elementor editor. I'll add a new section here and choose this 50-50 column layout. But before we add any content, let's just set all the same padding to this section that we added to the first one. So section, advanced, unlink the padding, and I'll make all these the same as last time. Now, if you notice how that 160 pixels padding at the top and the bottom adds lots of space inside the section. It's a bit like when you get an enormous parcel in the post from Amazon and it's mostly packing material with a tiny thing you ordered in the middle. Okay, back to desktop. So we've got more room to play with now. I'm just gonna just check this section's layout settings. Yeah, defaults are all fine here. So time to get some actual content in. So we'll go to the widgets menu, choose the video here. I'll leave Elementor's default YouTube URL here for speed, but you just add your own. And I want to just show player controls only. Now we want our own video image on the landing page itself. So we need to choose the image overlay, choose the image. Now, since the previous video, I've, I've now set alt text on these images, which is really important. Show the play icon, yes. Light box on. We want the video to pop up. I'll just have a little play with the content width. Great stuff. Okay, more content. Now, the first heading is actually the same style as the very first one that we had in section two. So let's just duplicate it. Now, of course, previously it was white. So we now need to set the dark text color to go with this white background. In the bonus follow-up video, I'll show you a better way to handle setting your heading and text colors in a few different ways, but let's move on. The next thing is a stars image. So we go to the widgets and drag in an image. Choose the stars image. I'll align that left and it can be the full size again. Now we need to drag in our next heading. So we'll get another heading widget. I'll pop in the text and I'm going to leave this as an H2. All right, let's style it. So up to style, choose a text color. I'll set the size and the font family and font weight. And again, in the follow-up video, I'll show you best practice for handling these settings overall, but you know, doing it this way is fine for this standalone page for now, just to keep things moving. I'll check the line height or lead in as you might know it. And just tighten that letter space in a little bit as well. Great stuff. Now John's designs always have a really confident use of space. So we've got a spacer here. And as I did it before, I'll just duplicate an existing one. So duplicate up here and drag that into place. Now we need some text. So we need a text editor widget. I'll leave the default copy for now. Um, into style, set the color again. Uh, we'll set the font family to Muli, 18 pixels. Now I think we need just one more tweak. If you remember for this section, we've got columns gap set to default. Now that sets 20 pixels between each column, but actually that's achieved by having 10 pixels padding all the way around each column on the inside because you know, 10 and 10 add up to 20 when they're next to each other. Well, I think we need a bit more control over things. So let's go up to column settings for column one, and I'm going to ditch that default 10 pixels padding inside. 
Now see how the image now fills the whole column? It's not being pushed in by the padding. It's that Amazon packing material I mentioned. So we'll do the same with column two and watch what happens. Okay, now to get it exactly how we want it. I'll use the up arrow on my keyboard here to add 40 pixels of it back in on the left. Quick preview. Excellent. And save. Now I've said already, but when you've made a section, always check responsive. So I'll switch to tablet in the responsive menu down here. Right, well, that 40 pixels padding is a bit much on tablet. So I'm still in the column settings. So I'm going to override that 40 pixels from desktop, make it 20 instead. And that's better. Over to mobile. Whoa, um, mm, bit of a car crash. So what's happening here? Well, the negative bottom margin on that image is pulling everything underneath it up, as you re might remember. Now on small screens, that doesn't look great. So on mobile, let's get rid of it. So we'll click on the image, go to advanced, and I'm just going to zero the margins. And that overrides it, but just for mobile only. Now, if we just scroll down here underneath column one, if you remember, we zeroed out all the padding. So I'm just going to add some bottom padding back in for mobile. And in this case, I could have used bottom margin too. It would have been the same end result. Now on column two, if you notice, we've still got the 20 pixels left padding coming in from what we previously set on tablet. So I need to zero that out too. And on mobile, it'll be nice to have this text centered, I think. So let's do that. Actually, can we go up to the whole sections typography settings and set text align to center on the whole section? Ah, no, look, there aren't any responsive settings for text align here. So if I set that here, it'll set it on all size screens, not just mobile. So we'll have to click on each one. So we'll go back across, click on each one, set the alignment for mobile individually on each of them. Back to desktop. Good, just save this and preview. Yep, happy with that. Section two, sorted. I hope that was helpful. Before you move on to section three, I'd love it if you could leave me a comment below if you like the video or if you've got any questions. And could I ask a small favor, please? Would you mind clicking one of the social share buttons below this, like Twitter or Facebook? It massively helps me spread the word and get the videos out to more people. You're a legend. Thank you very much.